Welcome to Ever Increasing Faith. And remember these words from the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Well, thank God for another day and for another opportunity and privilege to share with you the living word of God. I want to thank you for your continued faithful and financial support. Because of that, Ever Increasing Faith Television is able to stay on TV and online in your local area. On the screen is an address where you can send your gifts of love. I want to thank you for whatever past, present, and future support you're led to give. Remember, you are helping to make it happen. This is a message primarily regarding men. It, it's for men, but ladies, you need to take copious notes as well and listen intently as well. But the, the message is entitled Warrior. And we're going to begin here in First Chronicles 12, 28. Now, what we're reading here is, is some details regarding uh, David's army at Hebron. And so in, this, in the 23rd verse, it talks about the numbers of the, of the divisions that were equipped for war. And then we get to verse 28 in First Chronicles 12. And it reads, Zadok, Zadok, notice how 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 similar Zadok is to Zedek, like Melchizedek. And we know Melchizedek, one of the definitions is king of righteousness. Well, Zadok also means righteous. So Zadok, a young man, everyone say young man. A young man, a valiant warrior. And from his father's house, 22 captains. I want to focus on young man. I want to focus on man, and I want to focus on valiant warrior. This man whose name means righteous was a young man, and the Bible didn't stop there. It referred to him as a valiant warrior. Now, this word warrior, hail in the Hebrew, and it has a number of meanings starting with strength. A warrior was one of strength. The word also means, this word in particular, the word also means man of valor. It means a man of valor. Now what I find interesting about this is that in antiquity there were plenty of warrior women. And yet this word warrior in particular has a focused definition of the male gender only. As a matter of fact, the word Hail means man of virtue. Shail means woman of virtue. So there are distinctive Hebrew words that focus on a particular gender. And this word Hail, meaning warrior, focuses on the male. So it means strength, it means might. A valiant warrior is a valiant man of strength or a valiant man of might or a valiant man of virtue. But in addition to that, the word warrior also means valiant. So now what we have here is we have an adjective describing warrior. We now know what warrior means. What does it say about Zadok? If the scripture would have simply read Zadok was a young man and was a warrior, by definition, we know that he's valiant. By definition, we know that he's a man of strength, a man of might, and a man of virtue. But the Bible takes it a step further. The Bible is filled with superlatives and descriptive terms. And regarding Zadok, not, not only was he a warrior, which means he was valiant, but he was a valiant warrior. And this word valiant, this word valiant, the Hebrew word is, is gibber and, and, and the word can apply to either giants or human men. In this case, it refers to a human man. And so valiant can mean champion. It can be, mean strong and it can mean mighty. So Zadok was a mighty warrior and he was a strong warrior. He was a mighty man of might, a mighty man of strength, a strong man of virtue. Now, now, question for the men in the house and question for the men online. 
do you desire to be what the Bible describes as Zadok? Maybe you don't desire it because you're already that. And it's okay, you can own it. Are you a mighty man of valor and virtue? Yes. I heard one emphatic yes. All right, how, about, how about we start with this? I can't speak for you, but I can speak for me. I am a valiant warrior. I am a man of strength. I am a man of might. I am a man of valor and virtue. Can you say the same about yourself? Men. Maybe by the end of the lesson, we'll be, we'll be fully convinced. I'm, I hear a lot of sure yeses, but, but I, don't, I don't hear completely sure yeses across the entire Okay, we're, we're going to get there. A young man, a valiant warrior. Now watch this. Jeremiah 50. Go to Jeremiah 50 and find the ninth verse. Why don't we try this? I'll probably get a better response if I ask the other gender. So, so let me try this. Ladies. Do you have any interest in a man of valor and virtue? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Ladies, those of you who are married, do you happen to be married to a man of valor and virtue? Yeah. Well, that's convincing. Rob, you're supposed to let your wife respond to that one, not, not. <laughs> Jeremiah 50. Look at verse 9. Okay, this is the prophet Jeremiah. And you know, the prophets of the Lord would, 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 would speak the word of the Lord primarily to Israel, but they would also speak to Gentile nations, heathen nations. And, and here's a proclamation, a judgment on on the land of Nimrod, Babylon, and Babylonia. And in this, in this ninth verse, the prophet says, for behold, this is God speaking through his prophet Jeremiah, for behold, I will raise, I will raise and cause to come up against Babylon, an assembly of great nations from the north country, and they shall array themselves against her. From there, she shall be captured. Here's what I want to focus on. Their arrows shall be like those of an expert warrior. None shall return in vain. Okay, in describing David's army, we came across a Zadok who was labeled as, who was identified as a what? As a valiant warrior. And now the prophet Jeremiah is likening the arrows that will come against Babylon. He's likening those arrows being shot by way of those who are like expert warriors. The word warrior is the same Hebrew word but I want to now focus on this word expert because not only do we as men want to be valiant warriors, we should also want to be expert warriors. And this word expert has to deal with prudence and prudence is in the family of what? Wisdom. The wisdom family is a loaded family. You got knowledge, you got understanding, you got prudence, you got discretion. So this word, this word expert means wise warrior, prudent warrior, one who circumspect, one who gives attention to. I think women want a warrior that gives attention to. Wisely understands, has insight, is considerate, is intelligent. These are, these are the definitions, these are the words that this word expert means in the Hebrew. Uh, uh, guidance and wit. That's an expert warrior. So we have warriors and while being a warrior alone is impressive, as men, we should seek to be valiant expert 
warriors. Mighty, strong, prudent, and wise warriors. Now let's go back to the beginning because how can we not go back to the beginning? Because that's when we're first introduced to this creature called man. So where are we headed? Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and then breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living. Now, depending on your version of scripture, if you're reading from the New King James Version, you'll see the word being. Man became a living being. If you have the traditional you probably see the word soul. Man became a living soul. But a more accurate translation of this would be creature. The Hebrew word is nepez. And nepez doesn't mean being. It means creature. Man became a living creature. Now, I've shared this with you before. Learned this from my father who has also shared this with us on numerous occasions. We, we are accustomed to referring to ourselves as human beings because of what the word means in, in the secular arena. But biblically speaking, you can only have one being. Because in order to be a being, you have to be. And the only one who be is God. God is a being, and as the infinite being that he is, he has created creatures, creatures. Beings be, creatures are created. So man did not become a living being, or we can say that this word being is more accurately translated as creature. Man became a living creature. Notice what it says, that, that God formed man of the dust of the ground. And, and we know that the Hebrew word for man here is Adam which means ready. So Adam was ready. He, and I don't mean, and, and you all know that, that I'm for all people. You know pastors for all people. Pastors also for accuracy. And so the Bible has on numerous occasions been whitewashed. Sometimes the, 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 the extreme response to it is to blackwash everything, and that's not accurate either. You ever seen white Jesus and the response to white Jesus is black Jesus? But, but consider that Jesus was a composite man. And probably a more accurate picture of Jesus would be whatever color Adam was since Jesus was the last Adam. So clearly he's a man darker than white but probably lighter than black. And being that Adam was ruddy, and this doesn't mean one who's white who blushes whose cheeks get rosy. No, ruddy means Adam was reddish. He was ruddy and reddish. He, he probably was, was the color of, of many of our Native American brethren. And Jesus was probably the same color because if you look at the genealogy of Jesus, you see a lot of nations in there. And when you look at all the nations... In the genealogy of Jesus, you, you, you can't come out with stark white or pitch black. You can't. Composite is what you come out with. Once again, most likely the same color as the first Adam, who was what? Ruddy. That's what Adam is. That's what man means in this scripture. It, it reads, and the Lord God formed the Adam. Now, he's not Adam yet. I need you to grasp this also. He's not a man named Adam. He is the Adam. Because when God made woman, when God made woman, he didn't make Eve. You know, we have a habit of traditionally saying God created Adam and Eve. Well, in the sense that God created all things, yes. But when God created the woman, he didn't create a woman named Eve. God created the female Adam. 
They were Adam. They were the Adam. You want to know when Eve shows up? After sin. Did you find that interesting? Till Genesis 3.20 that the Bible says, And the man called his wife Eve because she was the mother of all living. It presents a mind-blowing picture of the separation sin caused. Not only did sin cause man to be separated from God, it caused male and female to be separated from each other. Marriage is supposed to be a picture of the Adam before sin. That's how one you are supposed to be with your spouse. You're supposed to be so one that she thinks for you and you finish her sentences. Let me stay on track. I need to let me stay on track here. It says the Lord God formed of the, once again, verse 7, formed a man of the dust of the ground. And then we see something here that we actually don't see with any other living creature. What did God do? He breathed into his nostrils the Adam, the man's nostrils, the breath of life, and the man, the Adam, became a living creature. Okay, so here we see a, a, a more detailed account of the creation of man because, of course, we also see in Genesis 126, this is on day six of creation, and the last thing that God created was man on day six. Right, the next day on the seventh, he did what? He rested. So the latter part of, of day six, he, or, and, and, well, probably not the latter part, but after he had created the beast of the field on day six, he then created what? He then created man. He said, let us make a man in our image or according to our likeness. Genesis chapter one is the panoramic view of creation. Whereas Genesis two then focuses on a few things and, and elaborates. So Genesis two, seven is, is the forming of man from the dust of the earth and God breathing into his nostrils the breath of life so that man would become a living creature. And then we have this in Genesis 2.15. Make your way to Genesis 2.15. And what do we read here? We're, we're, we're literally going to find out what makes a man a valiant warrior and an expert warrior, a wise and mighty man of virtue. Now, I don't care what it is that you do for a living as long as it's legal. But you need to know this, real men work. Real, what, I don't care. I don't care what it is. I don't care what kind of work it is, as long as it's legal. If it's legal work, a man should be doing it. Because watch this. Genesis 2.15 tells us exactly why God created man for his creation throughout the earth. And it reads, then the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to do something. To tend and to keep it. Who's reading from a traditional? Where am I? It, it says what? To dress and keep. So the new king says to tend and keep. The traditional says to dress and keep. So to tend is to dress. To dress is to keep. What does tin mean? What, what does dress mean? God placed man in the garden to do some work. The word work, the word tend or dress means to work. It, it means to till. Watch this. It also means to keep in bondage. Now, don't think of bondage in a negative sense because there's no sin in the world at this time. In other words, it means that Adam's work would remind creation it was in service to him. To keep the creation of God in bondage, not slavery, but keeping the proper order of things. Notice that everything in creation was made before man. Man was made last, which means everything was made for man. So he, he does what? He puts man in the garden to work, to tend, to dress, to work, to serve, to till, to keep in bondage. But then also it says to keep it and to keep 
You, you ready for the next thing real men do? Real men protect. I don't care how you protect as long as it's legal. Real men protect their families. The Bible says in Psalm 84, 11, the Lord God is a sun and a shield. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. What does that mean? God's a sun. God's a shield. What does the sun do? The sun provides. What does the shield do? Shield protects. Oh, so the Lord God is a provider and a protector. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Well, what do you think men are supposed to be? We're the priests and kings of our homes, which means we're the sons of our homes and the shields of our homes. We are the providers and we are the protectors. Now, this doesn't mean... And I'm a, I'm a bit old-fashioned, and I know that old-fashioned doesn't always fly well in the era in which we live in. As a matter of fact, some, some old-fashioned things will get you canceled. But I'm a bit old-fashioned. I come from an era, or I observed an era, of men who protected and provided for their families... Who, who did not say that their wives couldn't work. They were okay with their wives working, but they didn't look at their wives' work as the source of provision and protection. That's, that's, that's the era that I come from. That's the man that I saw in my house. If I, was, if I wasn't with my dad, I was with my brother-in-law, Mike, and guess what I saw? The same thing. If I, wasn't with, if I wasn't with my brother-in-law, Mike, I might have been with, with my godfather. I might have been with Papa. Guess what I saw? The same thing. Sometimes I was with my godbrother, Brainerd, and Joey in the house with his father. And guess what I saw Big Brainerd do? The same thing. That's, that's all I've seen. That's all I know. And I know it's 2022, but I still believe it's my responsibility to protect my family and provide for my family. I still believe that it's, it's my job to have a job. Now, now, I, I, I'm not coming against, if you, if your household has, has come up with a system by which the roles are reversed, I'm, I'm, I'm not inherently against that if that's what's working for you. But, but let the record show that, that the, the man said, yeah, this is what we're going to do, what you said. Great idea, wife, we're going to do that. But in the more traditional sense, I believe that what we see in the scriptures is the man providing and protecting. So this word, this word, uh, a keep means to hedge about, to guard, to protect. It means to attend to. It means to mark. It means to observe. It means to watch and to look narrowly. This is, what, this is what men are to do regarding their homes. To mark them, to attend to them, to protect them, to guard them, to observe, to watch, to hedge about. That's what a re real warrior does. Now, consider this. At this particular time, there's no sin in the world. And yet, God told Adam to hedge about. What should that have alerted in Adam? There potentially is an adversary coming from somewhere. Now, while sin didn't exist Amongst the ranks of men and, and within the world, sin existed. Sin had already affected the heavens and the cosmos because of Lucifer's sin. So sin existed, but it hadn't tainted man yet. So what did God say? Hedge about. For all we know, 
Because the scripture doesn't say, for all we know, God didn't tell him why he was to keep the garden, but just that he was to keep the garden. As a matter of fact, you might be more alert if you're not sure what you're looking for. So you're looking at everything. You're observing everything. You're looking narrowly at everything. That's why he placed him. It says the Lord God took the man, he put him in the garden to do two things. Tend or dress and keep it. Then remain in this, this second chapter and drop down to verse 18. Drop down to verse 18. It says, and the Lord God said, it's not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. You know, I've never looked this word up until last night. This word means it's so powerful because it, 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 it shows the value of, of male and female. This word comparable means to stand before or against, not in opposition, to stand before in the presence of the opposite part but in the presence of. So in other words, the female and the male, while there are distinctive features that they have that set them apart from each other, they are also each other's mirror. Because remember, Genesis 126 through 27 says what? Male and female, he created them. So them are made in the image of God. Males look like God and females look like God. And before sin came into the world, you had the Adam, the man. And when God reached into the side of the Adam and pulled the woman out, you now had male and female Adam. Y'all still with me? <clears throat> okay. The Lord God said, it's not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. So out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. He formed them from the beast. I mean, from the, from the ground, beasts of the field, birds of the air. And so he brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever called, whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. So what did Adam do? Now, now, now look at the fullness of this verse. It says, so Adam gave names to all cattle, to the birds of the air, and to every beast of the field. It says, but for Adam, there was not found a helper comparable to him. Why is it worded that way? Because what was God doing? He was bringing the beast of the field and the birds of the air to see if they would be qualified or if they would fit as a suitable partner. So, so while Adam is observing these beasts, of the field and these birds of the air, he's analyzing them. Now think about this. Think about this. Dr. Dyer, are you here? There he is. So last night, man, there's nothing like having a, a scientist on speed dial. I texted him last night. He had checked on me anyway regarding the bout with COVID. And so I responded back to him and I said, yeah, doc, I'm doing fine. Oh uh, yeah. Can I call you for a second? Can and so I called him and ran a couple questions by him, and, and, and he, he gave me, he, he shared one thing with me. I'm going to share it with you in a second. One thing I, I just never, I don't know why I never thought of it, but it, it makes all the sense in the world. And it's right there in the scripture. So, so think about Adam has full use of his brain. Max level. So, so, so. You have to think about, think about the most intelligent humans on the planet today. They would be considered inferior to Adam's level of intelligence. 
And so, and so with the thousands and, 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 and hundreds of thousands of kinds of, of creatures, think about this. Adam was able to name all the beasts of the field and the birds of the air within the framework of a 24-hour day. Dr. Dye said, based on the math that they've done, somewhere like five to six hours. Five hours, five minutes. Remember now, he's got full use of his brain. There's no sin hindering what he's able to do. So this is genius at max level. So what's he doing? God's bringing them the creatures, and he's analyzing them and saying, that's not a suitable helper for me, but it is a lion. And this is not a, this, this is not a helper comparable to me, but it is an eagle. And he's just going down. That's a giraffe. That's a, that's a, isn't it zebra? It's not zebra. Isn't it really zebra? Yeah. Okay. I don't know about that one. I don't know how Deborah could be Deborah, but zebra is zebra. Anyway. Good point, right? Literally, it's spelled the same way. Change the D to a Z. It goes from Deborah to zebra. Anyway, somebody, somebody look it up. Find out. That's a, that's a, that's a rhino. That's a hippo. That's a hawk. That's a falcon. That's an owl. It's not a helper for me. But God, I'll tell you what it is, because he had God's creative ability on the inside of him. So he names all these animals, and when he's done, he still hasn't found a helper suitable. So no beast of the field or bird of the air was a suitable helper. They could serve man, but they weren't comparable. Oh, watch this. They weren't, they weren't. Similar mirror opposites. So what happens? Verse 21, the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into woman. And just like he brought the beast of the field to man, just like he brought the birds of the air to man, he now brought woman to man and Adam said, now that right there, this one right here, Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. We learn, we learn what God always intended for the male from day one. And there have been numerous threats to this union ever since sin came into the world. But from the very beginning, God intended for male to have a female. God intended for a man to have a wife. As a matter of fact, in, in, in Matthew 19, when, when questions are presented to Jesus about divorce, his response is, as it was from the beginning, male and female. So while, while he says that there is, there is a permission to get a divorce, it's not God's ideal picture. Because God didn't create men and women to get divorces. Now, divorces happen because sin's in the world. Everything that is uncomfortable, everything that is, is, is fatiguing, everything that hurts, everything that's awful is all the result of sin. And it was God's man who let sin in. So when Adam let sin in, Adam let, Adam let inferiority complex in. He, he let stress in, he let anxiety in, he let fear in, he let divorce in, he let sickness in, he let pestilence in, he let, fa he let it all in. God didn't create the earth to experience any of that, and he didn't create his man, his woman. 
his human creation to experience any of that. Adam's disobedience invited it all in. So that's why it's all here. And the devil has taken advantage of that, and he has launched a full-out attack on God's first institution, the institution that existed before Israel and the church, the marriage. I want you to notice something else here in verse 24. Another verse that points to God's ideal union and institution. As a result of God reaching in to the side of man, removing a rib, and from that rib forming woman, verse 24 then declares what? Therefore. Therefore what? A man shall leave his what? His father and his mother. We, 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 we see here that it reads father and mother, but we're forgetting it's also saying husband and wife. Because the father and mother that the man are leaving are husband and wife. So it, so it sounds to me like God, not only has God always intended. Now listen, if you're not married, it doesn't mean that you're lacking. I want to be very clear about that because we're on this side of sin. If you don't have children, it doesn't mean you're lacking. If you got a divorce, it doesn't mean you're lacking. If, if, if you're a single parent or if you're co-parenting, it doesn't mean you're lacking. All of that is just the result of sin. Not anything you did in particular, just the body of sin in the earth. COVID came into my body, bottom line, because of sin in the world. You, you all remember in John... Uh, 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 the child is the child is born blind, right? And the question is asked: Did this child sin, or did his parents? Why would you even ask? Did the child sin? How could a child sin before the child comes into the world? Jesus said neither. And although it's not written, it's implied. Jesus basically said the child didn't sin, the parents didn't sin, but sin, sin in the world. So I want to be very clear. Once again, if you're not married, if, if you're in God, you're complete. If you're not a parent yet, if you're in God, you're complete. If you've been divorced, if you're in God, you're complete. If, 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 if you're co-parenting or you're a single parent, if you're in God, you're complete. But before sin made its way into the world, God gave us a picture of how he intended his human creation to function in the earth. And here's what he intended. Husband, wife, father, mother. Husband, wife, father, and mother. That's why the marriage institution and the, and the parent institution are two of the greatest expressions of the glory of God in the earth. And the devil from the deepest recesses of his black soul, he hates marriage and he hates family. He hates it. He hates it because he kicked himself out of his own. And he refuses to take the blame. He rather charge God instead of, his, instead of himself. A man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Now, make your way to Genesis 1-1, because I want you to see something. I want, I, want to sh I want to show you how important this thing is. That, that as a valiant and expert warrior, which it is evident based off of conversations that I've had and, and, and counseling sessions that I have that there are currently single women, even in this congregation, looking to be found. They're looking to be found. It's not their only focus in life. They're handling their business but they're looking to be found. And there's nothing wrong with that because you were created to be found. Right. 
Once again, it's, it's not that it makes you complete. It's just a complete picture of what God always intended. Okay. And, and then think about this. Because this just came to me right now. Think, think about this. Now God has foreknowledge, meaning he knows everything that happens and that will happen before it happens. On top of having foreknowledge, he has omniscience. So that means he knows everything all at once. He's got both. If there's no sin in the world, if it never comes into the world, and man's prohibition, part of, part of his purpose for creation was to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth, it would seem that once the earth was filled, mission would be accomplished. What say you? There's no sin in the world, which means no one can die. So if mankind are reproducing, that means God must have had an intended time in which reproduction can stop because now the earth is filled and there will be no funerals. So there would then be, be no need for anyone else to be brought into the world. One, one of my uh, fellow brother the theologians helped me see that. It's just the only thing that makes sense. Be fruitful and multiply and do what? Fill the earth. Well, if, if no one can die and there's no death in the world, you can't keep produce. Where are they going to go? So once the earth is filled, it would seem like mission would be accomplished unless there was some other cosmic plan God had. Well, sin comes into the world. And so now we have what? Now we have marriages and some of them are successful. Some of them are not. Some of them end in divorce. And maybe both of those parties then go and marry someone else. And that union is successful. In some cases, those extra the, or, or those, those newer unions are not successful. It, it could be a number of, 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 of things or reasons as to why they are and, and as to why they aren't. But notice on the other side of creation in the very end, when the Sadducees, who don't even believe in the resurrection, are trying to trip Jesus up about the resurrection, and they ask, they say, well, this woman, if she was married to one man, and then according to the law of Moses, she married all the brothers, they asked him the question, well, then who is she one with or married to in the afterlife? And Jesus' response was very interesting. He said, they're like the angels. They're neither given in marriage, nor do they marry. So, so think about this. Think about how the free will of man can disrupt what God always intended. And it doesn't take away from him being God, nor does it take away from him being in control. But because an in control God created creatures in which he gave them free will by which they must take their free will and on their own submit to him they can disrupt thwart or stall certain aspects of the plan of god let's word it that way not the full plan of god but certain aspects or elements because think about it why now is it that we're neither given in marriage on that side. When if no sin came into the world, everyone would have been given in marriage until the earth was full. The only reason that I have for that is sin. Sin disrupted an aspect of the full plan of God. There was marriage before sin, but when there's no longer any sin in the very end, the Bible says they're not given in marriage. Why is that? We don't have a specific reason. The only thing that I can come up with is this space in the middle by which Adam let sin into the world. It what? It, it interrupted. It interrupt. Not the full plan of God, but elements of his plan. Okay. Now, Genesis 1.1 says in the beginning, God did what? He created. Drop down to Genesis 1.7. Genesis 1.1 says he created. What does Genesis 1.7 say regarding the firmament? Made. That's what I'm looking for. So Genesis 1.1, he created. 
Uh, Genesis 1-7 says he made. Go to Genesis 1-17. How does that read? We've got created in verse 1. We have uh, made in verse 2. Set. In Genesis 1-17, it says God set them. We already read Genesis 2-7. We can take a look at it again. That scripture uses the word formed. Then we go to Genesis 2.22, which also uses the word made. Watch this now. Genesis 1.1, God created. Genesis 1.7, God made. Genesis 1.17, God set. Genesis 2.7, God formed. Genesis 2.22, God made. And then I'm just going to add this one. In Genesis 4.1, you all remember when Cain and Abel were born? Do you remember what Eve said? She said, I've now acquired a male from the Lord. Now, now, why am I highlighting these six words? Because they're six totally different Hebrew words, yet they all mean make and create. They all mean make and they all mean create. So is, is there, first off, is there a difference between making something and creating something? And then secondly, why are they six different words? We all know God doesn't waste words. I'm going to focus now on the maid that we see in Genesis 2.22. I'm not going to make this portion about all of the words. I just want you to observe that we have six different words that can mean make or they can mean create, but they also each have their own unique meanings. Genesis 2.22 is the one I want to focus on because it says what? It says, it says that God took the rib and he made now this this one this one this one here this one is rich oh and, and by the way go back to go back to to genesis one look at verse three genesis one verse three and, and what does that say it says god say let there be light and what happened there was light and then and then what does verse four say it says, and, and God saw the light. That's the part I want you to focus on. He what? He saw the light and he saw that it was. As a matter of fact, ladies and gentlemen, if we were to read verses 9 through 12, verses 16 through 25, we would read that after God created what he created, he saw that it was good. And then in verse 31, after he's created everything and he's looked at the perfection of his creation, he then says it was very good. There's no sin in the world yet, but when it came to man being alone, God said it wasn't good. How can something not be good when there's no evil in the world? I want you to hold on to that for a second. He creates the light. He creates creatures. He divides the land from the water and he says it's good. And when it's all said and done, looking at the totality of his creation, he says it's very good. It's even good when he forms man. It's just not good that man's alone. Let's zone in on this. God said it's not good for man to be alone. What is good is for man to have a helper comparable to him, which would be a wife. Now watch this. We'll be able to end here today. Genesis 2.22 says what? Once again, it says that he took a rib and he what he made. But the word made here isn't the same word as made in Genesis 1 7 when it says God made the firmament, etc. It's not the same, it's not the same Hebrew word. It's a different Hebrew word. What's unique about this Hebrew word here in Genesis 2 22? Ladies, you want to know how awesome you really are? Oh, you already know? She said, we already know, but, but go ahead. <laughs> what, 
What is this building made of? Materials. Let's go with that word. That's, that's, we don't have to try to figure out which ones. It's made of materials. This building was built and its makeup consists of a number of materials. Now, before the building was made, the materials were individually or distinctly the materials that they were. But weren't those materials made up of something also? In other words, if we keep reversing this thing backwards, eventually we would get to a space of nothing. That, that these materials ultimately came from some kind of void or nothingness, which based on what we as Bible-believing Christians know, God spoke it all into existence. So, so God, God, there was nothing. Then God speaks things into existence. And what he speaks into existence, that stuff is made up of stuff. Like this human body is made up of a number of parts and organs and systems, correct? Okay, so, so let's go with the building and the materials. The materials were the materials. Now, we know the materials came from somewhere, maybe stone or metal. Right? Where did the stone or metal came from? It, it, from the earth. And where did the earth come from? From God. But the materials fashioned together beautifully resulted in this edifice. When, when, when the Bible says in Genesis 1-7 that God made the firmament, it means he made it from nothing. But in Genesis 2.22, when it says God made the woman, notice that the woman wasn't made from nothing. The woman was made from a something that was made from nothing. As a matter of fact, the most accurate, oh, watch this. The most accurate word for Genesis 2.22, that word made, is build. God built the woman. And because God's materials have no flaws in them, she was made flawlessly and perfectly. She was built. Let me, let, me, let me go back to this verse. I want to extract that word made and, 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 and plug in the word build because this, this word made, once again, is not the same word bana. But in Genesis 1-7, the word made is asa. He made what he made by way of his words, from nothing to something. But the woman didn't come from nothing to something. The rib existed. So from the rib, just like this building, materials were brought together to create a perfect portrait, a, a perfect sculpture. From this rib, God built And that's why it's always been said that the woman is more refined. And the word rib also means curve. So that explains a lot. I, I, want, I want you because you have to understand that in Proverbs 8, Jesus is referred to as a master builder, as a master craftsman. Remember, 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 dad would always share with us the example of how the father and the son work together in creation. One speaks the matter into existence. The other would then take the matter in fashion and form. Jesus is known as the master craftsman, the master artisan, or the master builder. Always involved in the creation process, the logos, Christ in eternity past, which means he was involved in building you, ladies. And there is no structure better built than a woman. We're just going to close on that, on that one right there. And we'll pick up next week. Well, if this message has been a blessing to you, the announcer will tell you how you can obtain an audio or video copy of the message you just heard for your spiritual enrichment and edification. 
And remember these televised and online broadcasts are made possible by the continued free will giving of you, the viewer and listeners. And remember these words from the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 7. For we walk by faith, not by sight. This entire message is now available on compact disc or DVD. CD copies are available for any amount. DVD copies are available for your love gift of $15 or more for the ongoing support of this ministry. Call the number on your screen or write Frederick K.C. Price, Box 90,000, Los Angeles, California, 90009. Please indicate the program number you see on your screen. Want more? Then enjoy unlimited streams of this and other life-changing lessons at EIFMOnDemand.com. Thank you for watching and join us again for more ever-increasing faith.